On May 8, 1945, celebrations erupted all around the Western world upon the defeat of Nazi Germany. From Moscow to Los Angeles, crowds gathered and people cheered. In the United Kingdom, more than one million people gathered to celebrate as Winston Churchill stood on the balcony of Buckingham Palace posing his famous victory sign. The leader of Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, had committed suicide on April 30th as Allied troops surrounded and bombarded Berlin. Hitler knew that it was the end of Nazi Germany and with his death, along with the execution of Italian leader Benito Mussolini, it was the end of the war in Europe, ending with an Allied victory. With the victory in Europe now completed, the United States' focus shifted solely to the Pacific and the ongoing war against the Japanese. The United States knew that the Japanese would not give up easily and surrender unless there was no other way. The invasion of Japan was risky and put the lives of a million U.S. soldiers at risk. After capturing many major islands such as Iwo Jima and Okinawa, the President of the United States, Harry Truman, was now faced with a very difficult decision invade Japan and risk a million American lives, or use the newly developed weapon, the atomic bomb. Before the outbreak of war, American scientists were becoming very concerned with the nuclear research being conducted by the Nazis. They felt that the U.S. could not let the Nazis gain a weapon of that magnitude, so they set out to create their own nuclear weapon. Research began immediately as scientists rushed to create an atomic bomb. By 1942, research had progressed enough to make a full-scale bomb program possible. President Franklin Roosevelt developed a top-secret program called the Manhattan Project. The goal of this project was to develop the first functional atomic bomb. He appointed Colonel Leslie Richard Groves as the commander of the project. Groves had been hoping for an overseas combat assignment, and when he was informed about being the commander of the Manhattan Project, he was unimpressed, but in the end, he accepted the role. Groves did not understand the science behind the atomic bomb, so his first order of business was to find scientists who could contribute to the program. After rejecting several candidates, Groves appointed Dr. J. Robert Oppenheimer to be the head scientist of the operation. Oppenheimer was an American-born Jewish-German and knew the importance of defeating the Nazis in the atomic race. Later that year, Italian scientist Enrico Fermi demonstrated the first artificial self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction and would become part of the Manhattan Project. After years of development and searching for test sites around the U.S., they finally settled in Los Alamos, New Mexico. There they would develop the first atomic bomb. At that time, this bomb was only a theory and nobody knew quite what to expect. On May 31, 1945, the scientists began their final preparations on the bomb. This bomb was to be tested at a site known as the Alamogorado Bombing Range in New Mexico. Oppenheimer would rename this site the Trinity Site. July 16, 1945 was the date set to test this newly created bomb. The members of the project anxiously awaited the date, uncertain what was going to happen. The morning of July 16th arrived, and at 5.30 a.m., the first ever atomic bomb would explode. The blast threw a multicolored mushroom cloud nearly 40,000 feet into the atmosphere and could be seen from 180 miles away. There was a range of emotions from awe to horror to joy for creating the first functional atomic bomb. Now that it was created, and with the death of President Roosevelt, the decision turned to the new president, Harry Truman, to use the bomb or invade Japan. With Germany and all the Axis powers in Europe out of the way, the Allies, mainly the United States, could now focus on defeating Japan and ending World War II. The United States began preparing for an invasion of Japan which was named Operation Downfall, as well as putting extensive research into developing the atomic bomb. To start things off, the U.S. began to conduct high-altitude precision bombing that, at first, was very unsuccessful due to the pilots' inability to hit their targets easily. This was then changed to low-level incendiary raids that were so successful that during the firebombing of Tokyo on March 9th through 10th, an estimated 100,000 people were killed. This was the deadliest bombing of the war yet. But Japan wasn't going to surrender anytime soon, and so, in order to end the war, President Truman had a choice to make. Follow through with the invasion, or use the newly developed atomic bomb. 
problem with the invasion was that expected casualty rates for US soldiers were extremely high, with some estimates even reaching a million casualties. Truman decided against an invasion, and because Japan rejected the Potsdam ultimatum, he authorized the use of the atomic bomb. After some deliberation, Hiroshima was chosen as the primary target of the first US nuclear attack mission because of its high industrial and military significance, plus the fact that it hadn't been targeted by the earlier bombing raids. On August 6, 1945, weather reconnaissance planes were sent to fly over Hiroshima to check weather conditions. After finding cloud cover to be minimal, they advised the Enola Gay carrying Little Boy to bomb the primary target, Hiroshima. At 8.15, above Hiroshima, Little Boy was released, and after falling for 44 seconds and 31,000 feet, it detonated about 1,900 feet above the city. The explosion created a blast equivalent to 16 kilotons of TNT, and the radius of complete destruction was about one mile, with resulting fires across 4.4 square miles. People on the ground reported seeing a brilliant flash of light followed by a loud booming sound. Some 70 to 80,000 people of whom 20,000 world soldiers, or about 30% of the population of Hiroshima, were killed instantly by the blast and the resulting firestorm. Plus another 70,000 were injured both by the blast and the resulting radiation. However, this did not get the Japanese to surrender, so on August 9, 1945, a second mission took place to draw Big Boy, a more powerful plutonium bomb. Kokura was the primary target and Nagasaki the secondary, with the mission plan almost exactly the same as the Hiroshima mission. When the boxcar, the plane that was appointed to drop a fat man, came to Kokura, however, the cloud cover from the previous day's firebombing obscured the aiming point, and because of a failed fuel pump, they were forced to go to their secondary target, Nagasaki. At 11.01, a last-minute break in the clouds allowed Boxcar's bombardier, Kermit Meet Beham, to visually sight the target as ordered, and so Fat Man was dropped. After a 47-second drop, 1,650 feet above a tennis court, the bomb detonated, resulting in an explosion that had the blast equivalent of 21 kilotons. Unfortunately, although the bomb was more powerful than the used on the on Hiroshima, the effects were confined by the hillsides to the narrow Okokami Valley, limiting the blast and the ensuing fires to the valley and not the full city. The bomb did, however, do a considerable amount of damage, and so the Japanese were convinced to surrender. Victory in Japan Day, or VJ Day, occurred on August 15, 1945, where the initial announcement of Japan's surrender was made, and on September 2nd, 1945, the signing of the surrender was made officially ending World War II. However, the bombs had many short and long-term effects that have shaped the course of history. Although the atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the bombings have had many effects on the entire world, not just the people in Japan. The physical effects of the atomic bomb ranged from minor burns to radiation poisoning while the psychological effects included instilling fear into possible enemies like Russia. Some short-term effects were the burns and other injuries caused by the explosion, or the high exposure to the bo atomic bomb's radiation caused immediate hair loss, vomiting, bleeding from the gums and mouth, ulcers, cancer, and other immediate symptoms. A small amount of exposure to the radiation was enough to make women who were pregnant likely to miscarry or have children that have disabilities. Some long-term effects of the atomic bomb were cancer, a lower IQ, a smaller brain, blindness, delayed growth, and other physical injuries. These effects were not usually detected until about 20 years after the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. People who live around and near Nagasaki and Hiroshima also have the potential to have radiation poisoning. Radiation can also cause blood disorders such as leukemia, malignant lymphoma, Foma, and other related disorders. Any exposed children during the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima have been statistically smaller and have delayed growth than the children who were not exposed to radiation. Children who were born shortly after the bombs were dropped had birth defects, smaller brains, and did not grow as fast or as much. 
There are many different effects that the atomic bombs had on the people since World War II, and while some of them were terrible, they all had an impact on the history to come. World War II had been going on for six years before the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Truman was faced with many difficult decisions throughout the war, but the most difficult one was the, whether to continue the war or to end it all with the atomic bomb. Truman could decide to risk thousands of other American lives or drop the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and end it all. Thousands of lives had been lost, and more would have been lost if Truman had not decided to drop the atomic bomb. Even though dropping the bomb was an extremely hard decision for President Truman, Truman saved millions of lives by not invading Japan. The atomic bomb was what won the war for America. Because of Truman's difficult decision, America did not lose more lives and World War II was ended before something more catastrophic happened to the world.